video is going to look at the tritone and the subject of the tritone came up when talking about Debussy's L'après-midi du phone. Uh, the tritone, as many of you may know, is this unsettling chord uh, which came to possess, or at least we think, sinister evil connotations associated perhaps with the devil. And this gave rise to a lot of uh, commenting on our YouTube video about Debussy, particularly from Maurizio AMF. He said, sorry, but I hate when people just repeat the story about the Middle Ages demonic Tritonus. Really not true. Used from time to time everywhere, even in Gregorian chant. To take a, another one of our comments from Wilhelm Orangenbaum, uh, he says, don't further spread that myth, mate. The Tritone was never banned. It was considered difficult to sing in tune and therefore avoided most of the time, nothing more. There was no association with the devil. The first time such an association, association was made was in the Baroque era with the expression Diabolus in Musica. Now, both of those guys or ladies, they are not incorrect, but they don't tell the full or the wholly true story about what the tritone really was. And I should clarify that we didn't say in our video that the tritone was actually banned in the medieval period. So the first thing we've got to look at to answer these questions is, well, what was, or what is a tritone? A tritone is an interval, that's a space between notes of three whole tones or six semitones. So taking Debussy's piece, uh, we have a tritone when the flute ascends and descends between the C sharp and the G. So in Debussy's piece, we have the C sharp and G, and there's three whole tones, one, two, three, between them. That's our tritone. So why does the tritone sound so weird and unsettling? Well, that's because the tritone takes us out of the world of traditional tonality by including two notes that are essentially in alien keys to each other. We're juxtaposing these, these notes, which are essentially from parallel universes. They're in a different musical language to each other. This tips us into dissonance. So why is everyone so uptight? Well, as I said, it's unnatural, it's restless. And to sing a tritone in the context of medieval ecclesiastical music would have been pretty difficult. Now, about the tritone being banned. Well, this is probably untrue. It's a myth that has been propagated by long-haired guitar wizards who like to tell you that monks were excommunicated or punished from church. Uh, for singing this uh, prohibited uh, interval. However, having said that, there was certainly a culture of frequent avoidance, as, as Wilhelm Helm, um, talked about, avoidance of this interval in medi medieval liturgical singing. The first prohibition, for want of a better word, of the tritone came with the development of Guido of Arezzo's, uh, what was called the hexachordal system, developed by uh, this Guido, do, uh, do, uh, Guido of Arezzo in the medieval period. And from that time, the medieval period, until the Renaissance, the tritone was generally rejected for its uh, tonal instability, and therefore people tried to avoid it. But that's not to say that you can't find it in Gregorian chant. Just listen to Perotin and you will hear the tritone more than once. Whatever the case, what we can say is that by the Baroque period, and by the classical period, going into the classical period, composers are becoming a lot more accepting of the tritone, but they're a bit more circumscribed in the way that they use the tritone. What they do is they essentially acknowledge the tritone's existence. They acknowledge that it's essentially unresolved, but it's always pushing towards resolution. So the idea in classical music is one of tension release. It's a tension release mechanism. And what I mean by tension release in the tonal system is if I play this, this will make you really tense. We all know where we want that to go. If we take the B, that's our tritone again. 
And the way you resolve the tritone, at least the classical musicians understood, was by uh, moving a step in contrary motion, which would go. Oh, how nice is that? We've got there. So tritone resolved in contrary motion. So when Julie Andrews is prancing around Vienna doing sol, fa, sol, la, ti, sol, do, we all want her to resolve to that lovely C major chord which takes us away from dissonant tritones to consonant tonality. But what's all this stuff about the devil and why are Maurizio and Wilhelm so angry with me for bringing up tritones and the devil? Well, there is a question that there was this idea that the avoidance of the tritone was all about the fact that it was associated with the devil. Now, certainly from the Baroque era, uh, the tritone comes to be known as Diabolus in Musica, or the devil in music. And the composer Telemann in 1733, he talks about me against far, which the ancients called Satan in music. But both our commenters say that there was no association with the devil during the Middle Ages. But I would contend that this is a really, really vexed question that would probably benefit from more scholarship, because some do say that Diabolos in Musica uh, was a late medieval concept. And there are commenters like, there were, scholars, there were scholars like the great uh, Dennis Arnold, uh, who tell us that the associations with the devil were in fact already inherent in medieval music itself, uh, from that time when Guido of Arezzo designated uh, the tritone essentially a dangerous interval in his hexachordal system. What we can say is that it's only in the late classical and into the romantic periods that composers start to use the tritone more freely and really symbolically to represent the devil itself. Composers forget about all this tension release stuff from the classical era and resolving uh, harmonies and use the tritone for the very purpose of exploiting its evil devilish connotations. You only need to consider a composer like Liszt, who starts his Dante sonata with a tritone to represent hell. So... That's a perfect example of a tritone used freely. But we don't need to be so esoteric in the 20th century and in the 21st century to see the tritone actually infiltrating popular music. Just think of the entirety of West Side Story, which is essentially built on the tritone. That's a tritone. Maria, I just met a girl named Maria. That's a tritone. And we could say the devil is on our TV screens every single day. Just think every time we listen to The Simpsons. Tritones. <laughs>